Hi there. Thought I'd just put together a little video on this battery drain problem that some people get with the stereo upgrade. So we've upgraded to the is it the RCD510, I believe. This one's got the SD card reader on it. It's got a port on the back for a USB. You can somehow have a line in. I'm not sure how you do that. There must be an, an, another connector for the back there. The problem you get with this CD player when you try and fit it into some of the older generation Volkswagens and Audis probably say at some Skodas as well is that it continues to draw current after it's shut down. So I've got a multimeter in there. I've put that in line with the fuse so I can actually measure the current that the thing is power uh, taking from the battery. So it seems that when you turn the ignition off you shut this down but it continues drawing about 400 milliamps, 440 milliamps there. Now, if you've got a 63 amp hour battery, that means that you're going to be, you know, completely running the battery dead in about well, 100 hours, 120 hours. Now, you know, if you left the car for maybe two or three days, that might be enough to completely flatten the battery to the point that it won't start anymore. Or it's possible that if your battery's not that great, it's not very new, you might actually flatten it a lot quick, uh, quicker than that. So I've tried a few different things that have been recommended. The seller I bought it from recommended trying to take some fly leads off the can bus here. We've got, um, I believe, the orange and black and the orange and what's that one? Brown wires are the can bus wires straight from the connector. The pins they told me to take them from were this pin and that pin whatever numbers they are there's no wires in there so i then looked this connector up online and managed to identify those two orange wires as the can bus wires i wired that straight into the stereo here so i've actually taken a pair of fly leads this red one for plus can this black one for negative can and i've managed to identify from the back of the stereo connectors that the wire coming out the back here, I think I have an adapter for the Parrot Bluetooth, but I think I identified the purple and the brown wire coming out going up to this connector here, purple and brown, followed those through, and the purple one goes to can, it's purple and brown, so purple according to the back of the stereo or the top, I can't get to it now, let me try and flip the stereo over. Yeah, it's good to double check these things. So the purple one coming out is can minus. So the purple one comes up to there. So at the back of this connector, the orange and brown wire is can minus, and I've connected my black wire to that, and the orange and purple is can plus. Now I cut the can wires from under here, and what that did then, when I turned the ignition on and off, the stereo didn't respond. If I turned the lights on and off, the lights on side on the front of the stereo didn't come on either. So they use that to communicate all the features like turning on and off, turning the lights on and off, dimming the lights when the lights are on, and also reading from the, uh, what was it called? The speed reactive volume control. So as you increase speed, the volume ramps up and that's taken off this can. So I did jump in at the deep end and run these fly leads down to these can connectors on this port down here I believe it's called the OBD port that didn't work I got no response whatsoever I did read briefly somewhere that you can get to another can system off the back of the AC control unit so here is the heater AC controller I believe there's lots of different versions but on the back is this whopping set of connectors so you've got this connector here is for the fan controller this one here i believe is for all the temperature sensors in various places and different flaps and this one over here with the how many pins are there it's got 18 small pins 19 22 big pins making 20 in total that port there also has a can connector available or a cam system can rather can bus and i work that out as orange and green is the positive and orange and brown is the negative 
Now, it was quite difficult to get to that connector. I had to kind of slide it out of a bigger connector. Where is the bigger connector? It's underneath here. So it's kind of slid in there. I pulled this tab that way and then slid it out, which just allowed me access to the back of these. And I just stuck the wires in there to do some testing. And what I've actually found now is with those wires connected, I can actually control the stereo entirely off that can from the back of the AC unit. If I turn this car on, you'll see the stereos come on. Great. It's now pulling oh, about 800 milliamps. Turn it off. Now you hear the fan spin up because the AC unit's not connected. It hasn't thrown an error, but I've noticed this in other cars, that if you disconnect the AC controller unit, you get the fans come on full speed. I guess that might be because it's detected or not detected some information and it's put them on to keep the system safe. I don't know. So first thing, the windows come up. It's still drawing half an amp. You can still hear the CD player spinning. And it also sounds like you can still hear a fizz from the amplifier. So you have to wait. It's not happened yet. It takes a little while. And the first thing that will happen is the actual CD player will spin down and shut down. The screen is off. There it goes. So the CD player spun down. We're now drawing the 4.22 amps. I just mentioned this is in a Volkswagen EOS. It's a 2007 plate. Now it takes a little bit longer. So it looks like the, the answer to this battery drain problem anyway, and I'll, I'll prove it by waiting for that current to sh uh, drop off, is to actually disconnect the can plus and minus from the back of the stereo and reroute them to the can plus and minus that's been fed into the AC unit down here. Now I believe that might be the same on Mark V Golfs. I'm not sure. I've seen a lot of information about reprogramming a can gateway which I've not even found that unit yet. Still drawing 400 milliamps so it's not completely shut down yet. So yeah, you get the new CAN bus gateway and then you've got to reprogram the gateway or the car or something like that. It sounds really complicated. So it seems like, yeah, switching from, I believe, the orange system here is the orange and purple and the orange and brown is called the infotainment CAN bus system. And the other one is, is it the utilities? And it would seem that this stereo quite likes running off the utilities. It hasn't dropped yet from 0 0.4. Do I need to do something like lock the car? I'm going to lock the car. And there it goes. So. Yeah, I locked the car. I don't know if locking the car triggered it to shut down properly or whether I just hadn't waited long enough. You can see now the stereo has drawing zero amps at all. There's, there's no current being drawn at all or nothing that my meter can detect. The stereo's gone quiet and the alarm is going off. So the alarm still works. So I'll just try that again myself and see whether actually it does shut down completely with not locking the car. Again, I did double check that it shut down and it took about five minutes with no key in the ignition. I did leave the door open because it's bloody hot, but with no key in the ignition, it has shut down and now it's drawing zero milliamps. One thing I did notice is it will, it will turn on. So without the key in the ignition, it will turn on and it will run, which I'm not sure whether the old one did or not. But again, if you 
power it off or turn the ignition on and off it will shut down itself and then after about five minutes it will shut down and go to zero and it's been drawn so it turns out you don't necessarily need a gateway or a reprogram you don't need one of those kind of um, CAN bus emulator chips that you can just take out the AC unit and redirect the CAN from the back of the stereo into the AC unit and what I'll do now is splice splice that can in there but make sure you do separate it from the infotainment can I don't think connecting the car can up here to the car can down there connecting them together would be very good for the system I could imagine it could blow something I'm not sure how robust can is the other thing I noticed was trying to get the aerial connectors in the back some of the other series the aerial connectors are spaced out whereas on this one they're very close together and they wouldn't actually fit but actually by kind of trimming a small piece of this side off it's a bit of a messy job but i trimmed a piece off there it does actually allow them to now get close enough together to both fit on without having to buy a secondary adapter as well